Good afternoon, and welcome to Rothstein Park here in Chicago, Illinois, for this afternoon's game between the Milwaukee Dutchmen and the home side Chicago T-Totlers. At this time, we will introduce the starting lineup for the visiting Milwaukee Dutchmen. Batting first, the second baseman, number 15, oh, beg pardon, number 23, Nello Buffrock. Batting second, the third baseman, number 27, Venus Jackson. Batting third, the center fielder, number 45, Chesty Squiders. Batting fourth, the right fielder, number 28, Bustles Muxen. Batting fifth, the first baseman, number four, Booty Crooks. Batting sixth, the shortstop, number 11, Hoon McMunch. Batting seventh, the left fielder, number eight, Hoffy Bagdoo. Batting eighth, the catcher, number 15, Rob Dobster. And batting ninth, the pitcher, number 18, Goof Alibi. And let's give a good, dry welcome to the Chicago Teetotlers. Please welcome them as they take the field for today's game. At first base, number 13, Crispy Yellow. The left fielder, number 30, Better Frosty. The catcher, number 14, Moopy Pound Cake. The shortstop, number 35, Cowie Bang It. The second baseman, number 5, Lavender Sandalbags. The right fielder, number 23, Umpty Pool. The third baseman, number 2, Nevada Escargo. The center fielder, number 12, Ren Bugby. And taking the mound, making his debut this season, the starting pitcher number 19, Honky Carpenter. Hey, good afternoon to you all. Welcome to Rothstein Park here in Chicago, Illinois. For well, this afternoon's game between the Milwaukee Dutchmen and the Chicago hey, T-Tartlers. The Chicago T-Tartlers looking to go back to 500 today. Currently at 17 and 18. Uh, taking the mound for the T-Tartlers, Hunky Carpenter making his 1920 debut. He is... Uh, Unfortunate death as he does walk the opening batsman, uh, Nello Buffrot. Bringing up Venus Jackson for the Dutchman. Of course, in their visiting side, all orange. And uh, the white pants. And it's going to be potentially to bang it to yellow. A fancy damn double play. That fancy damn double play brought to you by Fancy Dan Follicle Products. Put more fast in your quaff with Fancy Dan and their assortment of styling salves, sculpting epoxies, and of course, crimping powder. Why be a Mitchell when you could be a Fancy Dan? So two out, Chetty Squiders is on with a single. And Hunky Carpenter taking the mound for the t Tartlers today. He is uh, a, a late call-up. He was actually sent down to the Nursery League after last season. He's going to let on Bustles Muxen with a single. Bring up Booty Cooks, so it's runners on first and second now with bad. two Number outs four, the for the Dutchman. However, uh, due to the unfortunate death of Kuba Hunis the other day, we uh, needed to have a replacement in place for the t Tartlers. And it's going to be a single up the middle and a run batted in for Booty Cooks. That is RBI number... It for Booty Cooks this season. And it's already a bit of a, a trial by fire for Mr. Carpenter. Of course, uh, Chicago losing to Bohunis. Uh, to uh, that, that horrid, horrid, uh, well, it was a line drive right to his face. And he unfortunately suffered uh, traumatic injuries and eventually death. This lofty bag continuing to get the, uh, the, the ball rolling and uh, he gets it rolling all the way to right field. And that is 
RBI only number two for Hockey Bag Duty hasn't played too often. We're looking at Rob Dobster who's going to fly that one out. Friend Bugby with the catch for out number three, and already the Dutchmen are off to the races. They are Hello. flying as the uh, saying is supposedly goes. Starting things off, uh, Goof Alibi on the mound for the Milwaukee Dutchman batting, uh, excuse me, he's got 17 strikeouts in eight starts, in his ninth start of the season. Facing Crispy Yellow leading off, 350, he's going to strike him out looking. Though scoring at home, that is of course a backwards K in your scoring manuals. And it brings us to Better Thrusty, who's kind of found his way into the starting lineup. He's a left, playing left field, moving umpy pool to right field. Versatile, of course, Mr. Pool. Uh, Thrusty so far batting 362. Four home runs, seven RBIs. He's going to ground that one right through the first baseman, Booty Cooks, who steps on the bag for out number two. Right. Brings up Moopy Pound Cake, a sentimental favorite of the Chicago t Totler fans. Do love their Moopy Pound Cake. And he is uh, batting 302. About on uh, average with him. He actually batted, uh, that was his uh, average last season in the entirety of it as well. One and two count. And he's going to ground that one right to Nello Buthrot. Throws it to Cook in time for out number three. A one, two, and a three inning for the Dutchman. Getting uh, Chicago back onto the field. And Hunky Carpenter hopefully has calmed his nerves just a bit. He starts by facing the B pitcher, Goof Alibi. A nice easy ground ball right to the first baseman. Steps on the bag. And it's out number one. Right to Crispy Yellow. Back to the top of the order. Now Bothrot uh, walks to get things started. Very strong batsman, has started leading off only in the last few games. He's batting 312 this season. He's going to pop it up into the air. And Pound Cake in foul territory gets the catch for out number two. So perhaps we've seen Mr. Carpenter settle down just a bit. Uh, again, you know, the first first game back jitters. Uh, not to be confused with any sort of jittering bugs. But uh, two on the count. He's striking. Ooh, right and he gets him, striking him out. <laughs> Brings us to the end of that one. He gets Venus Jackson striking out for out number three. And perhaps he's settled just a bit, Mr. Uh, Mr. Carpenter. So Howie Bangett starts things off. Batting 356 has been the cleanup spot, the cleaning up spot for the lineup. Seven home runs, 24 RBIs for Mr. Bangett. And he's gonna get things going with a line drive over to left field, fielded by Hockey Bag Dude. And that's the first hit of the game for the teetotaler, bringing up Lavender Sandalbags. Sandalbags uh, still kind of finding his form. He batted 331 when he played for the Pittsburgh Presbyterians last season. Uh, only 242 this season, but he hasn't had uh, enough uh, games really to get going. He's going to ground that one out. I think that was Venus Jackson with the uh, the scoop and the catch over the hoops. And more of the same does in fact move Cowie Bangett to third base. However, Umpty Pool grounds it out, and so with two outs. That is right to Hulvik Munch. Does he get the throw in time? He does. He lays out for that throw. And it keeps Howie Bangett on third base. And keeps the score 2 to nothing after two innings. Second time around already for the Dutchmen. The uh, defending champions of the Continental League. They did win it last year. Uh, with about two games to go again. That was a 42-game season. This is the 84-game season we are seeing uh, this this season in 1920-1990 of course we had to stop it because of uh, various reasons including the Kaiser. But yes, the Squiders is going to single up the middle that is hit number two for him and he's on with another single at three and one the count. That brings us to Bustles Moxon. Takes ball one. 
up the middle for a single, moves the runner to second, and Ben Bugby scoops it up, so Muxton on first, Widers on now second. batting, number four, the first baseman. And this brings up Booty Pooks again, who had the RBI single in the first. He's only batting 280 this season, he's yet to hit a home run. Seven RBIs against number eight when he counts the one that he hit in the first inning, and he might be getting another one as he singles it right to run Bugby the throw, just not in time. And it's a bit of deja vu all over again as Booty Cooks, another RBI single. It's 3 to nothing in favor of Milwaukee, who did win the last one in this. And Hoon McMunch is going to, well, it just hits the warning track. Better thrusty with the cat for out number one. Runners on first and second. Brings us to hockey back dude. Pops that one high up into the air. Ren Bugby has been uh, very busy today. Building ground balls and he gets an easy catch for out number two. Not deep enough into the outfield to get any of the runners to tag up. So it keeps runners on first and second and brings us to Rob Dobster, the catcher. He did end that rally for the Dutchman in the first inning and he's going to bring us to the end of the inning again by trying it out to better thrusty. That retires the sides. Going to the bottom of the third, it is now 3-1 to one, thanks to another RBI single from Booty Hooks. Ren Bugby grounding it right to Booty Coops. And the pitcher has a hat, hit at it. He gets his he gets a hit. Welcome to the Major League stat line of the Continental League, Mr. Carpenter. You are on with a single. I guess officially he is batting a thousand. Uh, but of course we don't say that with any sort of seriousness. That's one for one. However, uh, his average one hundred. Again, you don't expect much from a pitcher, but He's, uh, that's, that's respectable when he played for the Chicago T-Tartles last season. That's going to get him right past the third baseman, Venus Jackson, and that's going to be a single for so Perhaps a bit of offense coming alive here in the bottom of the third inning. And it's going to be better thrusty right to, well, he gets the field of choice. Uh, it does record an out, out number two, but it keeps feeling alive with runners on the corners. Whoopie pound cake, uh, both for one today. Swings at that one, and well, that is, that is better thrust. He's stealing second, so well done. For him, that is his first stolen base of the season. So kudos to him, Whoopie pound cake unfortunately will pop it out into foul territory. Well, on the three. So we're through three innings. It is three to nothing. Three seems to be the magic number. Yes, it is a magic number. Um, again, my name is Hubbard Baloney. You're listening to WMAQ here at Ross Stein Park in Chicago, Illinois for Chicago T-Tartlers taking on the Milwaukee Dutchman. This is game number 36 of the 84 game Continental League season of 1920 as that was Duke Alibi grounding out for out number one, bringing us to the top of the order again. Yellow buff rock, right to crispy yellow, and the one hit, one out again, bringing us to Venus Jackson, who's all for two today, hitting into a double play, and then striking out looking in the, uh, the second inning. Taken 0 and 2 count already. Now's that one off to stay alive. He copped up 48 pitches already. But he's going to get out of this one at 49 with an easy ground ball. Right to Lavender Sandalbags. Throw in time to yellow. So the T-Tartlers can bat again as Hunky Carpenter seems to have uh, calmed himself down after that uh, beginning. A bit of nervousness, however, the uh, T-Tartlers batting. Well, they're going to start things off with perhaps extra bases. That is Cowie Bangit with a double sliding in just in time for a double. Double number seven for him this season. Brings us to Lavender Sandalbags. 
A very slow start of the season, had trouble finding a starting position. He did get uh, acquired by the Chicago Tea Tartlers from the Pittsburgh Presbyterians. I believe that actually uh, was a deal that involved Mr. Tubal Hunas, the, uh, the dearly departed Tubal Hunas, as sandalbags will walk. That is walk number six of the season for Goof Alibi, and that is, well, that's a single. I was going to say he had a bit of trouble fielding it in Bustles Muxton. But Umpty Pool is now on with his first hit of the game, and it's bases loaded, no outs. And well, base barely avoiding the fancy Dan double play. Poon uh, McMahon with a catch. And that is going to score one, so the T-Tops get on the board with a Ren Budby. Well, he grounds out, but he does sacrifice to get home. How we bang it, it's a three to one game with two outs. And the pitcher spot, Hunky Carpenter swings at the strikeout to end the inning. So he drops from 1,000 to 500, I suppose, if we want to keep that, uh, that illusion alive. But we are through four, he will take the mound. Again, was fully expecting to spend his next season in the nursery league as he was uh, released from his Chicago contract, or at least uh, demoted, I suppose would be the word called. Uh, sent him down, I suppose would be the proper way of saying it. Not have a great first season in 1919 as he does give up an extra base hit to Chesty Squiders who's in with a lead off double. He is now three for three today. That is double number seven for Mr. Squiders. Mickey Carpenter had an ERA of 6.5, 6 6.5, 6 6.5 last season. Only a, a decision record of one and five. Want to get Bustle Mux and Browning out? It doesn't move. Squiders the third. Facing Rudy Fuchs, who is going to go three for three with three RBI singles. That is outstanding work. Uh, I do wish it was not happening against our home side, the Chicago Tea Tartlers. But Booty Cooks, three RBIs today, three for three. And that is going to keep the chain going as Hoon McMunch will get extra bases. Ren Bugby, he's going to go for three. In time, sliding in with an RBI triple. So it's now five to one in favor of the Milwaukee Dutchmen, who again are 13 and 22 coming into today's game. Uh, last place, but people have maybe found a bit of a uh, bit of form to their uh, to their baseball. Unfortunately, it's happening now, as that is oh, that is Coffee Bag Dude hit by a pitch. So he takes first, and it looks like that will be it for Hunky Carpenter here in the top of the fifth, as Derry Tampa. Coming for relief. Right. Derry Hamper. Of course, this is his uh, 16th game that he has appeared in. He does have a couple decisions, one and one. He's not saved. Mostly a bit of a lead, but he does get Lavender. He does get Rob Dobbs though, to hit it right to line it out right to Lavender Sandalbags for out number two. Bring us to Goof Alibi. Right. So a very tiring, exhausting first day back on the carpentry comes out in the middle of the top of the first fifth. Uh, he will get four and one thirds of an innings as Goof Alibi pops it up to Ben Bucky. Bring us to the top of the order. So crispy yellow. Who is one two today? A single and a strikeout. Bounce that one off for a one and two count. And there's been a bit of a log jam at the top of the Continental League. Everyone is kind of losing uh, sight of New Ohio, who are now four games in the clear, as that is crispy yellow grounding out for out number one. Bring us to Breda Thrusty, who's 0 for 2 today. That's going to go off the glove of Venus Jackson. Not sure if that will be recorded as an error. However, it does put Thrusty on first for the first time today. Actually, the second time today is he hit into a fielder's choice in the last at bat. Bring us Thank to Moopy Pound Cake. 
Upalabai, eight games so far. He averages going about six, just under six innings per game. The 46 total innings this season, and he does walk count cake, which runners on first and second, bottom of the fifth. is a good opportunity for Howie Bang it. He's got a single and a double today. Smashes it with high velocity. Oh, could it possibly be? Industry, a home run for the team topless. They go within one. A three-run home run from Howie Bang it. He hits it. Who industry? That is home run number eight for Cowie Bangit this season. RBIs numbers 25 through 27. And it is a five to four game. Here in the bottom of the fifth. One out, we look at Lavender Santa Bags. He walked in the last at bat. He's going to be potentially on a hit of a out. No, he cannot. The good uh, chase down and throw by Nello Buffer. A good effort looking lively as uh, he attempts to run it out. Power line is out number two. Bring us to Umpty Pool. One for two today. Like he should ground that one right to Hoon McMunch. And the throw in time. Poof. Well, at the end of five, it is only a one-run game. Chicago down five to four. Thanks to a Cowie Bang at home run. Scoring three runs brought to you by industry brand. Colognes, perfumes, and fragrances. Because if you are going out on the town and someone that finds you attractive loves how you smell, you just look her in the eye and say, my dear, that's industry. Found whatever smells are sold. Well, Derry Hamper coming in for relief pitching. Gets Nello Buffarot for out number one, grounding out right to himself. Gets Venus Jackson to have continue to have a rough day. He's 0 for 4 today with a uh, with, ground, with a flying out to um, Ren Bugby and he's going to get a 1-2-3 inning with Chesky Squiders doing the same to Umpty Pool. So, you do get a feeling that perhaps the tide is turning just a bit in the favor of the teetotlers. Bring us to Nevada Escargo and it looks like Boof Alibi's day will be done in comes Bood Hooges. Again, the closing pitcher Bood Hooges coming in for relief in the sixth inning. Interesting to see. So again, uh, Alibi only lasts five innings. Hooges does get the first out of Nevada Escargo. And he's going to get Brent Bugby to pop it up to Paul McMunch in shallow center field. And here comes Bowtie Harvey coming in as a relief, uh, as a as a uh, as a very dangerous pinch hitter. However, he's gonna pop it up to Nella And in comes Fig Peters. So Fig Peters who's been uh, perhaps the best of the of the bullpen for the teetotlers this season, facing Bustles Muxen here in the top of the seventh with a one-run deficit to mind. And he's going to get a very difficult thrust out. He strikes out Bustles Muxen. That is strikeout number nine for the season for Fig Peters. This is his 20th game, an ERA of 655. He's pitched 33 total innings, he's got three saves, and he's got a decision uh, record of 4-0. So he is easily the best uh, relief relief pitcher from the bullpen of the T-Tartlers and uh, someone to go to perhaps for the 7th and the 8th innings. And if he can stay economical, perhaps the ninth as well, he's going to get, that's going to go right to Red Buggy. And he gets Booty Cooks for the first time. Booty Cooks is not on with a single and not on with a, uh, an RBI single. Three of those five runs are from Booty Cook's RBI singles. Three of them to be exact. He gets Poon McMunch to ground right to Nevada Escargo to retire the side. So we have a good stretch. We stretch our muscles to our calisthenics. And we go to the bottom of the seventh with the top of the order, Crispy Yellow. 
and suddenly there's a bit of belief here in the uh, in the stands at Rothstein Park. This is WMAQ. My name is Habab Baloney. You're listening to Chicago T Toddlers Baseball. It is the bottom of the seventh. That is one out as Crispy Yellow pops it up into foul territory for out number one. Better Thrusty up to bat. It is five to four, bottom of the seventh. Chicago T Toddlers behind, losing to the Milwaukee Dutchman. But Thrusty's going to be on with a single that skirts right past. Venus Jackson and into left field, fielded by Hoffy Bagdood, and he's on first. Bringing in a pinch runner, interesting. So, Dim Barron appears to be um, coming in to run in favor of Beta Thrusty. So that means I imagine he would go to right field and Umpu Fu would move to set left field. It's a substitution we've seen quite a bit. And Whoopi Pound Cake will move back. Strikes to Woody Cooks foul number two. It does, however, move in Barron. Second base. However, Cowie Bangit does ground it out for out number three. So after seven, it is five to four. And Hofty Bagdu taking the plate. He has an RBI single in the first. He was hit by a pitch in his last at bat. And he's going to line that one right out to an underhanded catch by Nevada Escargo. One away here in the top of the eighth. It's as easy as that. A second pitch, a second hit, a second out at first. Rob Dobster grounding it right to Crispy Yellow. He steps in the bag. Put out number two. And Fig Peters seems to have, uh, have his mojo going. Phrase I tend to hear the kids say. He's got that moxie. And look in his eyes, he's ready to continue to throw baseballs at such an alarming rate. He gets Goof Alibi. Uh, excuse me, he gets Bood Hooges, not, not Goof Alibi. He gets Bood Hooges, striking out, swinging for out number three. So we head to the bottom of the eighth. Lavender Sandalbags gets things started facing Boo Hooges, who is now in for his, his uh, second, his third, his third inning. He's going to walk Lavender Sandalbags, so I guess Boo Hooges has, uh, his stamina has been increasing. Sandalbags has not gotten a hit yet. He's walked twice today. And that doubles the amount of times he's walked all season, which is just a fascinating stat, I find. Umpty Pool has one single, one hit today. He's batting 379 all season, 30 RBIs, so the Dutchmen have kept him quiet as he's found his way into the sixth spot in the lineup. He's going to be on with a single now, and that is going to keep his uh, inning alive for the T-Tartlers. So runners on first and second with Nevada Escargo and no outs. Escargo is batting 347 and about the same when runners are in scoring position, 348 to be exact. However, that looks like it could be, yes, a fancy dance a double play he hits into, so he is all for four today. It does, in fact, move Lavender Sandalbags to third, but it does kill a bit of momentum, bring us to Ren Bugby for a sacrifice hit. And he's going to tie the game off of a diving uh, block by... Woody Cooks unable to get the, the play at first and it is now tied at five thanks to an RBI single from Ren Bugby. Well, Big Peters takes the plate right now and I imagine he will come back in for the top of the ninth. He does line it right to Booty Cooks. We are tied as we get to the top of the ninth. It is all to play for with one inning to go. And it's the top three of the batting order for the Dutchman. Odella Buffer does not make good contact and he will go 0 for 4 today with a walk and 0 for 4 after that as he registers the first out. Big Peters. And his pitch number 20 facing Venus Jackson, who's over for today, and they have really quieted those top two batsmen. A walk and otherwise over for one into the count on Venus Jackson. 
Otherwise, a light on his bat, 18 runs batted in, a 306 average. He's going to pop it up to Cowie Banger for out number two. And with Chesty Swiders up the plate with two outs, widest three for four today, that'll be a very difficult out to get. He has two singles and a double. And he's batting only 283. That's going to drop right foul. Oh, that was. Well, that would have easily been extra bases should that have stayed fair. A one and two count. And he gets him striking out to end the inning. A massive strikeout and with a five all score. Beth Factory coming in. As I believe he came in from Gould Hooges before Beth Factory. Who of course was the uh, closing pitcher for the Leighton Park Lowlanders, the, the uh, nursery league side of the Milwaukee Dutchman, their, their, their affiliate team, their farm team. He has come in and he has uh, got That's out number one. It's a very interesting thing, the Dutchmen have uh, effectively two closers. They can kind of alternate and so I guess what we see that becoming the closing pitcher has now become Boot Hooges, or excuse me, yes, has now become Boot Hooges becoming a relief pitcher. It's a very uh, a, a, a embarrassment of pitching riches. Pitching riches. Rolls off the tongue very nicely. out Whoopi Pound Cake, and that does look like we are in for extra innings. So Fig Peters has thrown 28 pitches. Bases, bustles Muxin to get things started, and uh, in the... There's still two pitchers in the bullpen for the t tacklers Goop Glapage and of course uh, the closing pitcher Jepson Schwanwich uh, as the first day went from Carpenter to Tampa now to Big Peters but Peter still looks pretty strong that is gonna be caught at the warning track that was a bit dangerous to see but Buskis Munson did not have enough velocity on it and it is a very close first out a uh, bit of a uh, lumps in throats for the people here at Rothstein Park Tartler is trying to keep pace with that middle of the pack. Second place Philadelphia 19 and 16. 17 and 19 ABH in sixth place. So anywhere somewhere in between are two, three, four, five, and six. It is a very tight race as someone perhaps can try to chase down the new Ohio Debonairs as Hoon McMunch will line that one right to. That was Lavender Sandalbags with the catch. So yet another chance as Beth Factory. Coming in to face Cowie Bangett, and this is a good middle of the order. Cowie Bangett, Lavender Sandalbags, Umpty Pool. him striking out. So Beth Factory, that is I believe strikeout number 10 for Beth Factory, who's only stood up in 13 games. This is game number 14 for Beth Factory. Gets, gets Santa back to ground out right to Moon McCunt for out number 2. But with two outs, Humpty Pool, a third hit of the game. He is on with a single. That brings us to Nevada Escargo, who is going to come out for Ainsley Snakewhacker. And this is a very good uh, option. He's going to drop that in with a single, so that keeps the inning alive. Runners on first and second. Snakewhacker's batting 305. He can play third base and first. And suddenly, with Ren Buffy hitting it high, is it far enough? Oh, the wind has breezed on it! It is the end of the game! Ren Buffy, home run number five! What a big one, a three-run home run to industry to end the game! Brought 
to you by industry brand colognes, perfumes and fragrances because if it smells like industry it must smell good and if it's industry it must smell good and if it smells good it must be industry I'm so excited I messed up my live read however the Chicago Tea Tartlers get a huge victory in a, in a tenth inning walk-off thanks to Ren Bugby's three-run home run the final score of this one, the Chicago Tea Tartlers, eight runs from 12 hits, defeating the Milwaukee Dutchman, five runs off 11 hits with one error. My goodness, what a game we just witnessed. The winning pitcher, of course, is Big Peters going four innings. A very powerhousey uh, uh, performance from him out of the bullpen. Outstanding. Best Beth Factory gets the loss. We'll drop to one and two. Fig Peters five and oh my goodness. What a what a uh, what a performance from Fig Peters. It's an all-star as far as Chicago goes. He is uh, a very uh, integral part to this this bullpen. And the Chicago T Tartlers take two out of three games from the Milwaukee Dutchman in that series. They do have a day off. Both both uh, teams have a day off tomorrow. Uh, before hitting the road, uh, Milwaukee heading back home to their home stadium, the Milwaukee Baseball Grounds, where they welcome the New York Haberdashers. For Chicago, they go on the road to New Ohio in two days' time for a very difficult but very potentially pivotal series with the Continental League leaders, the New Ohio Debonairs. But, uh, of course, that is that. The game today, 8-5. Chicago goes back to 18 and 18, 500 even. Milwaukee drops to 13 and 23 and stays in the basement of the Continental League. So still uh, problems for Milwaukee, as it would seem. We thank our sponsors, the Honeywitch Tobacco Company, bringing you fine, fresh, hand-rolled cigarettes grown from the fabled tobacco roads of the Carolinas for bringing you the finest dandies of the day. Of course, they are bringing the finest dandies of the day for every game of the Continental League season here in 1920. The third finest dandy today is Booty Cooks for the Dutchman. The bully to him for that, going three for five with three runs batted in, all from singles. Ren Bugby is the second finest dandy of the day, going two for five with, of course, the game-winning home run. He has five runs batted in today, my goodness. And Cowie Bangit is our finest dandy of the day, getting a complimentary carton of honey wheat cigarettes. For his efforts, he went three for five, a home run, and three runs batted in. That, of course, is the Honey Wheat Cigarette and Honey Wheat Tobacco Company humbly requesting that you smoke wheat every day. Well, that will do it for us today here on WMAQ. We will join you yet again uh, for more home games as we are here for every home game of the 1920 season. For the Chicago Tea Tartlers, they hit the road to take on the new Ohio Debonairs. The next home game for them as they go to Boston after that is not going to be for a bit as they take on, as they welcome Philadelphia over in, that's not until July 8th, when they welcome the Philadelphia Brown Trousers back here to Rothstein Park. So it will be a while for us, but from WMAQ, uh, my name is Hubba Baloney. I wish you a good rest of the day, and I say to you, stay dry, everybody. <laughs>